What is going on everybody? Welcome to the maiden episode of the Yamaha YZF R3 and Suzuki SV650 beginner bike giveaway series. If you don't know, this is a series where we give away these bikes to two lucky folks. If you click the link down below on patreon.com, you can find out to learn how to enter for free or you can support the series and earn additional chances to win and all other kind of cool perks. Today, it's all about understanding the first impressions of these bikes and checking out uh, my new summer look apparently these are my new short shorts I've been wearing around yeah so today we're gonna be taking out both of these bikes seeing what they're like in the real world this is literally gonna be my first ride really on these bikes all I've done with them is uh, taking them directly from the dealership into my garage here so we're gonna take them out on a couple back roads we're gonna take them on the highway and we're gonna take them in an urban environment to see how they feel and what they're like so without further ado let's start with the Yamaha R3 Alrighty guys, first step we have our wonderful little 2019 Yamaha R3. Uh, this is literally my first time out on the bike. Uh, many long-time viewers will know that this bike is near and dear to my heart because it was actually the first bike that I owned. Um, I, back in 2015, bought a 2015 then-new Yamaha YZF R3, and I just love this platform. I have a lot of thoughts about it, especially now this, uh... There we go. I have a lot of thoughts about this bike. This is a wonderful platform. Uh, I think if you're, you know, a starter rider looking to get into like the sport category, this is a great place to start. So let's get out on the road, talk about it a little bit. We're gonna go down here south a little bit, uh, take it on a fun little back road on the highway to do some tests and then a little bit of urban environment. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the Suzuki SV650. So let's get a move on. So this is such a sweet little motorcycle, man. This uh, R3 is just a little sweetheart. I think if you are looking to get into the sport category, you really can't go wrong with this bike as your first. It's going to teach you all you need, all the foundations of sport bike riding are right here for you to enjoy in a package that is uh, accessible to newbies. You're not going to be overwhelmed by the power on this thing. It's just a fun little bike to ride. And I don't know, like it's, it's just, it's very, uh, that's what I'm looking for. It's so forgiving, you know, it's really friendly. I think one of the things you'll notice too, if you're a newer rider, um, me as a more experienced rider, I have a lot of baseline to compare this thing with. But uh, if you're a newer rider, since you don't have a lot of baseline, you don't need to worry about this next part. But if you are looking to get at this motorcycle and you have experience with other bikes, the first thing you'll notice is how tiny it is. Um, the R3 is a really, really small motorcycle, uh, primarily because Yamaha made it to be really accessible to uh, newer riders, people of all different shapes and sizes. Uh, I think the seat height on this thing is under 31 inches, so it fits a whole lot of people. Um, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a person who doesn't fit on a Yamaha R3. And this little engine, man, this 321cc parallel twin spins up so freely. Uh, I think that's one of the best things about this class of bikes is that um, you can really just rev them so hard and without really thinking about how fast you're going because you're probably not breaking any speed limits, you know? So we're just chucking it through these little corners here, having a fun time. And I don't really have to look down for how fast I'm going because I can kind of just feel the engine's vibrations and feel what gear I'm in and kind of just know that I'm probably in a good spot. And then you open it up, it has a cool sound. Like it really revs out, it's a bit of a screamer. I think redline on this is about 11,000, something like that, 12,000. It revs pretty high. Um, the other thing I've noticed a lot on this bike is, gosh, they did such a good job at making this feel like a more premium motorcycle than it actually is. Um, Yamaha really, really went back to the drawing board and put a uh, finish and fit and fit of materials on here that uh, deceptively make it feel like a much more expensive motorcycle. When you look down at the cockpit here, um, you really feel like you're on a bike that costs probably about 50 to 60% more than it actually does. Uh, a closer inspection does reveal that a lot of that is a bit of show, like the front air ducts uh, don't really actually lead anywhere. 
and then obviously these fork caps while they are a nice touch you notice that they're non-adjustable one of the things i really love about this motorcycle that they changed from the old one is they now put the clip-ons under the triple clamp right here so before this is a mod i actually did on my r3 that i owned um before the uh, the uh, clip-ons were placed on top of the triple clamp right here and the overall ergonomics package of this motorcycle was a lot more upright but now it, I think it struck such a good balance between something that is really sporty you can really kind of get in here ride it and have some fun but then like when it comes to you know actually commuting with it or living with it every day uh, it's actually really easy to do that I, I don't find myself tired on this bike at all like you sit if you, if you just sit kind of more upright like this it's a really standard seating position. You're not gonna find yourself being super tired on this bike. Let's rev it out a little bit, shall we? After we clear this little bump here. The other thing I love that they did on this bike that they upgraded from the old one is it doesn't come with those crazy bias ply tires anymore. I think that was such a misstep on Yamaha's part and I don't really know why they did that. Uh, maybe that was a deal they had with the previous supplier or something, but the first generation R3 came with these absolutely terrible bias ply tires, whereas this one actually sports some proper rubber. Uh, I'll pull over, uh, I'll talk about it in the garage of what tires this bike comes with, but I know that it's not those old bias ply tires anymore which it makes a big big difference and yeah this bike is so fun to just chuck down a little curvy road and again for newbies you really you cannot go wrong with this bike it's really really fantastic i really do prefer it over the ktm rc 390 i think the power is super similar i think it looks cooler than the ktm it's more reliable than the ktm um the dash is better than the ktm you get a really you get a, a rev counter that makes sense when you look at it uh, you have a really really clear speedometer reading big speedometer reading right here a clock at the top um, it, it's a really really pleasant thing to look at uh, and also like i said in the in the review video for these bikes the little features about it uh, in terms of the like little moto gp little style cutouts here and all this other kind of stuff make it feel like a much more premium motorcycle so let's get it out on the highway now and see how it does at speed so we'll do a little bit of a poll and see how we keep up with traffic because that i think is a big concern for people looking at this class of bikes they're like oh is it going to be okay in traffic am i going to be able to do this blah 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 so luckily we don't even have to fight traffic right now we can just kind of So it takes us a little bit to get there. It's, it's not a, a rocket ship by any means, but now we're cruising at about 67 miles per hour. The speed limit here is actually 55, so we're gonna slow it down a little bit uh, and keep it right at about 58, 57. Uh, and you'll notice we can cruise perfectly. I'm in top gear, six gear. We're just cruising right along down the highway right now. Uh, if I did need to make a passing maneuver, let's say someone, actually, let's do this. Let's say I'm in the right lane and someone is going a little bit slower than me, let's slow it down to maybe like 52-ish. I'm like, boy, I really wanna get past this person. All you gotta do is just drop one gear, put your signal on, and you're at 60 and fifth, back to sixth, over here, and you're good to go. Passing is really, uh, I think some people get stuck in the mindset of like the old 250s when it comes to these bikes, but these little motorcycles are really, really different than the 250s of days past. I think this is a really, reasonable option for street riding it's really not going to be something where you're lacking for power the one modification i would make to this bike pretty quickly uh, just being a more experienced motorcyclist is uh, the throttle has way too long of a twist to get to full throttle um, that's something they unfortunately did not address on this model but uh, a quick throttle tube from an r6 or changing it out to give it a quicker twist uh, is a really easy fix you don't even need to change the cables or anything like that you just need a throttle that has little holes that are can twist a little bit quicker um, that's about it but because uh, right now when you try to rev match you have to really give it the beans to get it to rev to the point that you want it to because um, otherwise and also when you want to go flat out you got to really like pull from all the way down and get in there uh, which gives it a really exaggerated kind of wrist movement when you're going flat out uh, which you do quite a bit on this bike because um, I think third gear ends at like 65 miles per hour or something like that so it doesn't really you, you need to rev it quite a bit for sure
that's the most fun thing about these little bikes is that you can just <laughs> you can rev them all day long and not get into any kind of trouble which is a hard thing to find really hard thing to find so cruising here on the highway highway 360 here in austin no problem at all in the little r3 so so far so good a first impression of this bike I, it's a lot of fun and it's just as fun as i remember my old r3 being honestly so now we're gonna cut to some in the city riding and we'll give you kind of urban impressions and feels for this motorcycle Alrighty guys, we are now going to test the bike in the urban environment. We're here in downtown Austin. We're going to see if the R3 makes as much sense as it did on the back road as it will here in the city streets. Already got a couple thoughts on the brakes. Uh, they're a little bit wooden. Uh, a couple reviewers have panned the uh, R3 for that. And I do happen to agree, the uh, braking system on the R3 is a little budget. And I find it to be, uh, you know, just a little bit kind of wooden feeling. In slow speeds, you really don't notice it, but if you're coming from a pretty quicker speed, uh, the bike does feel a little bit challenged in the braking department. But here in city streets, I think, is where the R3 really, really shines. Um, it's got really, really good gearing for the street. Um, you know, you, like I said, you're going to be at the top of third gear at like 60 miles per hour or something like that. So you're really not going to feel uh, a lack of power in slow speeds. Actually, I think it picks up and goes pretty well. And uh, because it's such a small motorcycle, uh, it's really, really maneuverable. Um, that's the one key feature about this bike that you'll notice uh, if you do end up buying it is because it's so small and the ergonomics are not that committed, you know, you're not super leaned over with your butt far off the seat. Um, it does end up being a bike that you can really uh, cruise around on every day if you wanted to. You can do stuff like this if you want. You can uh, kind of crawl along at slow speeds. It's really no issue. One of the fatal flaws of American cities, however, is the fact that you can't lane split around here. That's uh, one of the worst things about living in America and being a motorcyclist. Unless you live in California or Utah, then you can lane split, but here in Texas we can't lane split, so... Uh, you know, I can't test any of its filtering capabilities, but I assume because the bike is so narrow, uh, you can make it through a lot of stuff. You'll notice the city is pretty empty right now because it's, uh about lunchtime on a Monday, so a couple people out and about walking around, but not too much traffic, um, because for uh, my sanity and for your sake, I don't really want to test the bike in rush hour traffic. Don't really feel like doing that. But you'll notice from this stoplight, we uh, kind of get up and go. No problem. Rev matching is a breeze on the bike. The slow speed stuff is really simple. Uh, again, because the bike is so small, uh, you really feel how nimble it is. You can really just kind of chuck it around really easily. Um, and I, I think with the R3, it's one of those bikes where, like, there's no surprises, you know. It's a bike that's going to work exactly as you intend it to, especially if you're a more experienced motorcyclist or you're someone coming from your A1 license to your A2 license. Again, the only complaint I have so far is that the throttle tube is, uh, you know, a bit compromised. You have to really... Uh, twist a lot for it to go where you want it to go not because the engine's capacity but because the actual throttle tube itself and the braking feel is a little wooden for the front brakes uh, I wish that Yamaha had gone with a bit higher end component for the braking I think then this would have been probably the best beginner bike to have ever existed ever uh, it really is that good otherwise but with this compromised braking system it ends up being a little bit uh, you know just it just feels a little cheap on the braking but uh, yeah with that with this quick little excursion in the urban environment on the R3, let's go take the Suzuki SV650 out for a spin. All right, guys, and just like that, now we are on the SV650. First rides, first impressions. Um, I'm in the exact same spot as I tested the R3. We're going to do the exact same uh, route, except this time we're going to go north on Highway 360 because traffic's starting to get kind of bad down that way. So I'm going to head north and get on the 1 to test the highway potentials. But... Holy crap, no one ever told me that SV650s were this juicy. Uh, these bikes rule. This bike is awesome. Uh, for the experienced motorcyclist, I think this bike is so much fun to romp around. Uh, my only gripe so far is this key. Do you guys see this? What kind of old school key is this? But this is an indication of what kind of bike this is. So let's get this bike out on the road. Let's talk about it a little bit. Let's do this. So as I mentioned, the key is an indication as to what kind of bike this is. What do I mean by that? I mean, this is 
a bit of an old school bike, man. Like you jump on this thing, it feels meaty, it feels solid, like it's made completely of metal, which it probably is. Um, I don't know, this has more in common with the CB900F that we had for a very short amount of time, the Hentai Hornet, than it does with the FC07. Uh, the power delivery is so immediate. Um, it's so, so, so immediate, which I didn't really expect because this bike is billed as like a beginner's bike, but like literally you just give it a little bit of beans and this thing lights it up, man. Way more than the FC07, I'd say. The biggest thing about this bike is its throttle response. Um, I'll try to show you guys here a little bit, but like second gear just It's right there, you know, it's just this immediate experience um, Which for me it makes me kind of think like for a beginner You're gonna whiskey throttle this thing pretty easily. So I'd say if you're approaching this as a new rider uh, Understand that the Suzuki SV650 even though it has a little bit less displacement than the FC07 uh, Punches real hard. Uh, this V-twin is not playing in any games. I think for a beginner it's uh, quite the motorcycle, and you can still really have some fun with this bike, man. Look at this little thing go. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, this, this throttle is the defining experience so far. Uh, because the Suzuki has twin disc brakes also at the front, it's got real strong, nice progressive brake feel. Uh, it doesn't have that wooden feeling that the R3 has. Um, which is, you know, it's testament to the fact that this is a more premium, more expensive motorcycle than the R3, and it competes in a completely different segment, right? Like this competes with your Ninja 650s, your FC07s. I think most closely this competes with the FC07, and uh, you gotta remember Yamaha made the FC07 to compete with this class of bike. Uh, even though Suzuki updated this motorcycle uh, for the 2017 year, I think it was, um, they didn't change a whole lot. This bike still feels really old school in its power delivery and its character. It's just this little beast of a brawler. Um, it just has this pokey V-twin, excellent upright ergonomics, and it just wants to play. This thing probably wheelies so easily, but we're still breaking it in, so I don't really want to wheelie it. I also suck at wheelies, as many of you know. Like, look at this thing. Now, of course, given that it is a 650 V-twin, uh, you know, tuned for street riding, rev line is about uh, 10,000 RPM or so, 9,500, something like that. So it doesn't have that crazy top end pull, but what it lacks in top end pull, it more than makes up for with throttle feel, with uh, punchy delivery, that makes this bike an absolute blast to ride. This thing is so much fun. But again, that throttle is one of, if not the snappiest little throttles I've ever experienced on a motorcycle, uh, which I love. I love bikes that have no slack in the throttle, no play in it. They just immediately rev it up because I like to do quick little downshift blips like that. And bikes that have, uh, you know, sloppier throttle, it's just a little more annoying, you know, but this bike, you know, you come into this corner over here, you're like, oh, I want to be in third gear. Boom, you're right there, you're in third, giving it maintenance throttle. That's a fun time, dude. This bike is lots of fun. It's incredibly similar in feel to the uh, FC07, but unlike the FC, again, this bike just feels like it's entirely made of metal. It feels dense. It feels like it's gonna really perform and really uh, stay planted on the road. And there's a car in front of us, so we'll have to cook it down a little bit. But yeah, first impressions, man, this is a good, good, good bike. A great bike, even. Um, I think uh, a lot of guys who are more experienced motorcyclists, I'd say if you can, if you have the option, this is such a good, just like street bike. If you're not planning on doing any off-roading and you just want something to goof around with on the streets, this is a sweet ride, man. And these things, like I got this thing discounted because it was a 2018. You can get these for like 5,500 out the door, brand new at some dealerships, man. That's a hell of a deal for a brand new bike that's this much fun. Are you kidding me? Like, look at these downshifts, they're so pokey. I'm gonna try to show you guys again what happens when you whisk this throttle. It really just lights it up, it's kind of nuts. 
like it's got a lot of pull <laughs> it's got a lot of pull and I'm, I'm talking about that from a beginner standpoint like obviously since i owned an fz09 and i've ridden leader bikes like it's it's a good amount of pull but it's something that's going to scare an experienced rider but a new rider this thing will really spook you if you're not careful man you just want to play with it so this particular model does not have ABS. Uh, that's the only downside to this thing here. Uh, we are gonna take this little thing out on the highway, have some fun with it, see how it performs. Obviously, since it's a 650, what we're really thinking about here is, is the buffeting from the wind too bad? Uh, Cause obviously power and passing ability is more than ample in this motorcycle. Uh, again, this 647cc V-twin is plenty grunty to have some fun with on the highway and pass anybody you need to pass. Um, I think it makes around 70-ish horsepower, so it's plenty, plenty capable. Uh, but we're going to get it up to speed and see how it feels uh, on the road. Alrighty guys, we are making it onto the on-ramp, mixing it up with some traffic, getting on the highway, testing the Suzuki SV650's highway abilities. And as I mentioned, because it's a 650, uh, you can very easily get up to speed here. I'll show you guys, unless it's too crowded on the Mopac at this time. Let's see. Yeah, it might be a little hard to do a mini pole here to get up to speed. So everyone's just kind of cruising at 55, um, which we can we can kind of maintain this speed right here. We'll drop it up a gear. Um, and yeah, you'll notice that, you know, because it's a naked bike, obviously I'm experiencing chest buffeting. There's no, uh, you know, wind protection. But if that's something that concerns you, you can very easily put on a, a windscreen right here in the front of the bike. That way you can deflect it, giving some touring potential, um, which I think it's a super easy mod to these motorcycles. Uh, I haven't seen where they would mount up exactly. Yeah, going about 70 miles per hour, which is like 110 kph, uh, you notice that it does start to buff it a little bit, but it's, it's really not that bad. Um, I've owned plenty of naked bikes and ridden plenty of naked bikes at highway speeds, and you do just get used to it. It's really not too bad. Are you going to be doing, you know, 120 on this bike? No, not really, but to be honest, you, you shouldn't be doing 120 on the street anyways. That's super dangerous. Um, so that kind of does limit this bike's track day potential, I will say, because if you uh, take it out on a track, obviously then you can reach, you know, 120, 140, depending on the, how long the back straight is on a certain track you're doing. But uh, for a more closed course, kind of winding track, this bike would do very, very well at those things as well. I think the suspension is set up really, really well from factory, honestly. Uh, it's a good balance of, you know, rigidity, but also it's uh, soaking up bumps pretty well there's a couple bumps on that little twisty road we were on and the suzuki does soak it up pretty well i will say um yeah highway speeds are really no issue on the suzuki sv650 here and again passing power you don't even need to drop a gear i'm in top gear right now and i can just just muscle my way through anything i want really uh, you're faster than 99 percent of cars with this thing anyway so uh, you'd be really hard-pressed to find someone you can't pass if they are even being uh, a bit of a dick and not letting you buy or something like that. You can, you can crush up anything you want. Um, so yeah, Suzuki's highway potential confirmed. Now what we're going to do is take this down a little bit further and make it to uh, the city, do some urban riding on the Suzuki and see how that works out for us. Alrighty guys, and just like that, we are now in an urban environment with the bike, chopping it up with uh, some, you know, little street signs, little things like that. And uh, again, you know, because the Suzuki has this uh, relatively twitchy throttle, you gotta be judicious, you know? You gotta be really judicious about what you're doing with the throttle. You gotta be really careful. Uh, otherwise, it will get away from you, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, if you're an experienced rider, you know, it's no problem. It just happens to be a bit of a twitchier throttle, but it's really not too bad. Boy, it is fun to romp this thing around on some... Ooh, that's an XSR 900. Those are good bikes. Uh, yeah, this thing is super fun to romp around in slow speeds because of the torque, because of how, uh, you know, torquey it is at low revs and how pokey this engine is. <laughs> This bike's sweet, man. Plenty of poke down low. And that's exactly what you want from a street bike. You want something that pulls really nicely down low. This is why I really prefer this class of motorcycle over the 600s uh, for street duty. Because this thing, you know, despite it doesn't have, you know, the flashy looks of a, uh, you know, Gixxer 600 or an R6. But uh, it can do that. 
which a 600 just can't do. Honestly, you got to really rev those things out to get the power. Sure, they make 50 more horsepower than this thing, but they make it at 14, 15,000 RPM as opposed to four. So uh, these things are sweet there. And this class of bike is, is one of the best, one of the best. For everything, really, for all kinds of riding, for, you know, not just beginners, but for experienced riders, I think this is the go-to class for a street bike. Um, all the usable power you could want, you can really still have a lot of fun with this thing and ride it really hard, and you don't have to, you know, be super concerned about a traffic ticket. Yes, you can get in trouble with this bike, but it's nothing too crazy. So let's hang a left up here at Congress and uh, just take it a little bit longer on this urban environment and see what else we think of it. The one thing I will say about this bike is if you uh, are an experienced rider, it just coaxes you into just gooning it, man. This bike just wants to goon all the time. It's such a hooligan. It's such an old school, oh, I gotta make this yellow. It's such an old school hooligan bike. That's how it really feels. Super fun, super, super fun to ride. One thing I really like about the Suzuki and the R3 is uh, they have really predictable gearboxes. I haven't found any false neutrals or slipped out of gear or anything like that. Uh, the KTM definitely had some issues with that. My Ducati even has very, very small issues with that. But the big four, for some reason, have just figured out gearboxes in general. And this thing just feels solid as a rock. I think also Suzuki has had like 20 plus years of development for this specific motorcycle and gearbox combination, so I'd be surprised if it wasn't absolutely awesome. It really is just so amazing how snappy this bike is. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to ride because of how snappy it is. But again, that's its Achilles heel for being a good beginner bike because I think this is like, man, this is right on the edge of being a, a good bike for beginners. Like, man, you got to be so careful with this thing. Like that pulls really strong, you know? You gotta be careful. But if you're an older guy, I'm sure you'll be fine. Anyways, that's a little bit of some urban environment in the Suzuki SV650. Now, let's go to the garage and answer some questions from our Discord users about the two bikes. I'll see you there. All right, guys, so that was the first impressions of both the 2019 Yamaha YZF R3 and the 2018 Suzuki SV650. What we're gonna do now is look at a couple of questions uh, folks on Discord threw up about these motorcycles. They kinda wanna know what's going on with them. Uh, again, if you want the chance to be featured in episodes like this and join our Discord, uh, you can kinda take a look at what it looks like over here. Um, join up on the Patreon. That's the only way you can actually access our Discord server. So let's check out some of these questions. So, Despite uh, our moderator and one of our veteran users asks me, find a glaring flaw in both of them, not including Yamaha's shitty turn signal, which is pretty funny. Uh, Yamaha's braking system on the YZF R3 is definitely a flaw, very wooden feeling, not a whole lot of power. Um, I think for a beginner it's okay, but in emergency situations, this thing is quite wooden. Um, and honestly, for beginners, the Suzuki SV650's twitchy, very pokey throttle can be a fatal flaw. Um, otherwise, that's probably gonna be my only concerns with them, really. RW John says, do the bike highway good? Uh, both of them perform admirably on the highway, I will say. I didn't really find that either one was terrible for the highway. Obviously, the SV650 pulls a lot better than the R3, but both are plenty capable on the highway. Sneak -a Twix says, how would you improve parts of the bike as you experience riding them. Any recommended changes for those looking to get one? Will they scare the shit out of a totally first timer? This, if you're not used to like bikes at all, will scare you if you're a first time rider. This is a pokey, torquey bike, much like the FC07 is like the top rung of what you could ride as a beginner in my opinion. Uh, and the first thing I would change on this is adding some tank grips because this uh, has a slidey kind of metally painted tank and you slide right off of this thing. This one's not so bad because this matte finish, but the first thing I would change on the R3 is a throttle tube from an R6 to give it a quicker turn to get to full wide open. That's what I would do. RW John asks, did the front cylinder not get fuel if you ride a mega dank nooner for too long? I wouldn't know. I haven't ripped a mega fat dank nooner on the uh, SV over here, and so uh, I wouldn't know. 
Uh, Jim Moriarty says, seat height difference and riding position differences between the SV650 and the R3. Surprisingly, the rider triangles are really similar on these bikes. The SV gives you a bit more of an upright feeling, but honestly, both bikes are really comfortable. Even though the R3 looks way more aggressive and sporty, uh, you ride this thing around, you don't really feel like it is all that aggressive. So um, honestly, they're really similar, the rider triangles. I really don't feel like they're too different. Uh, another Carl asks, can they do dank nooners? This thing most definitely can do dank nooners. This thing you're gonna have to work a little bit harder for it. Uh, Portland James asks, do the bike have any under seat storage? That's a good question. Uh, let's, we can take a look. Let's, let's try to find out. Bit of a tight squeeze here. Park these bikes really close together. Uh, the SV has a small pocket right here. It's, it's about the size of my hand that you can put some stuff in. So that's pretty cool. So you can definitely throw some things in there if you need to. There we go. Now we'll see about the Yamaha. And if memory serves me correctly, the Yamaha has a small storage under the pillion seat over there. So all good for storage on both of these bikes. Hilgathor asks, R3 versus RC390 and SV650 versus FZ07. This is a whole video topic and I can talk about that for like 10 minutes. So I will table that one for two separate videos we could do it as. Mezami asks what the low speed handling is and how flickable they are. Uh, this little bike seems to just like fall over really effortlessly, but I will say I jumped on this thing after riding my desert sled for like a good 400 miles. So it felt really tiny and flickable and small, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty standard sport bike kind of quick flick feeling. The SV feels a lot heavier in comparison, uh, much more sturdy, but it's still will just dart into corners wherever you want to put it. Both bikes flick really, really quickly. They don't have any issues in terms of like flicking over. Uh, Ymir the Tusk asks, ergos and comfort on both, how it weighs on the wrist. Well, to be honest, people saying it weighs on the wrist is just like bad, uh, like, you know, riding in my opinion, you should never have weight on your wrists no matter what you're riding. So you shouldn't be pushing on the bars. You should be like light on the bars and kind of like pushing in a parallel motion with the ground. You should push like that and never have any weight on them. So neither one of these are gonna be that bad. Uh, they're both pretty comfortable, like I said. Hilgothor asks, which one is getting covered in hent hentai, I assume? Uh, none of them, uh, hopefully, Thank hopefully. A Riley 95 asks, how long would you ride each on a regular basis? I would take the SV the whole damn day if I could. This bike is so much fun to ride. I would ride it the whole day. The R3, I would ride it probably the whole day as well. I just feel like after a while, you would really be wanting some more torque as an experienced motorcyclist. But if you're new to riding, you could also ride this thing all day long, which is great. <laughs> Mr. Max say, say which one go faster? Uh, SV, go faster. <laughs> Hey, Riley95 asks, best real world application for each. They're both excellent kind of like street and commuting bikes. Uh, if you want a bike to take on back roads, both of them are gonna be super fun. Um, I would say like, you know, unless you really want the extra torque of the SV, like the R3 is gonna be just as fun, especially for a beginner. Um, but their applications are extremely, extremely similar, I would say. Uh, Lamp Shady says best commuter versus highway riding. Um, I would definitely say that the R3 is a better highway commuter because of the windscreen. But if you put a windscreen on the SV, it's way nicer than the R3 just because of that extra torque and passing power. Uh, Ymir the Tusk asks, also point out the brake, how well they bite or don't. Uh, yeah, so the R3, again, like I said, has a very wooden feeling brake. And uh, what I mean by that is like in the initial bite, it just feels like there's no play and you're not getting any feedback from it. It's very just kind of like stiff and it's hard to explain, but you just don't have confidence that you're braking at the speed you need to. Whereas this, because it has a dual disc front brake, uh, these nice Tokiko calipers here, um, it has a very progressive feel and you definitely feel the extra biting force. So that's my comparison on the two. Uh, Lamp Shady asks, does the 2019 R3 have ABS? Yes, it does. I see the sticker right over here. Uh, Toucan Demand says, does the upside down fork on the new R3 feel any different than the previous generation? Hope I'm not too late for the video questions. You are not too late, Toucan Demand. Um, honestly, I haven't been able, like, I, in order to truly compare, I would love to put, like, a first gen R3 versus a second gen R3, like, on track to really see the difference. Also, I haven't ridden an R3 in, like, three years or something like that. Um, but to me, 
this feels a little more planted, much more sporty, but that's given a lot to the clip-ons that are under the triple clamp right now. Um, but this is a really sporty feeling motorcycle. I think these upside down forks do feel a little bit better, a little more sporty uh, than those old right side up models. Uh, and finally, Tubbs asks, I would say the new R3 Ergos versus the RC390, how it actually affects handling. The RC390 literally feels like a little baby super bike. Uh, it's, it's like, it really wants to go. You're, you're quite high up with your butt, quite low down with the handlebars. It feels like a proper super sport motor, so you're not too far off with the RC. Whereas this feels much more upright, much more easy going, but when you wanna have some fun with it, you can really get in there and, and tuck in and have some fun with it. But when you wanna commute back home, you're not gonna be aching your back doing it. So I think the R3 is a better all around bike. The RC is a super specific, dedicated niche tool. So. That's what I think of it. Anyways, guys, those are the questions you had. I'm going to shut this down over here and stop recording. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week, we're going to be diving into specifics on one bike or another. I haven't looked at my calendar yet, but I think we're doing the R3 first, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. If you want to learn how to win these bikes, again, hit that link below on Patreon. It is not a pay to win. All you got to do is follow the instructions, send me an envelope, and you will be entered to win. But if you want to support the series, you will get additional chances to win extra perks you'll join our discord and all other kinds of cool stuff so hit that link below learn more about it uh thanks so much for watching i'll catch you guys next time see you later mm -hmm.